Wood Turning with Tim is made possible by these fine sponsors. The American Beauty Tim uses was made by Robust Tools. All our lays have a seven year warranty. Our tool wrists feature a hardened rod on top. Lots of sizes to fit your lathe. Robust, because the making matters. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners. Today in wood turning, we're going to be making a really cool project. We're going to be making a necklace holder, and it is also designed to hold little rings and jewelry and stuff. You have a dish down here you can put your knicky knacks, and then when you come up along here, you can see that we have these little posts to hold the necklaces. Now, there's a couple things to think about. Um, well, one thing to think about is ask your wife about your opinion on this, or her opinion on this before you do it. <laughs> because she said she had necklaces 18 inches long, and I'm like, cool, okay, so I made this 18 inches long, right? No, it's 18 inches this way. So it's 9 inches this way. So the first thing we're going to do up top is make a modification, and instead of being 18 inches, this is going to be about 15 inches. So we'll make this just a little bit shorter as we go along. The other thing is, aesthetically, she said, why did you put golf tees on the top of it? Well, I'm a guy. I was thinking of that. So we're going to modify those a little bit too along the way. But we're using Goncala Alves, and then this is Wenge, which it looks like ebony. And you notice it's wiggly a little bit? Well, look at this. I put in a hinge in the top, it's a roto hinge, so it allows it to rotate so when you walk up you can turn it around to get to the necklace that you want. Well anyway, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off with a six inch blank that's two inches thick, a Goncalo Alves. I'm going to drill a hole in here and we're going to mount it on the lathe with a worm screw. So we've got the blank mounted on the lathe using a worm screw and I'm going to grab a small diameter bowl gouge to start off here because this is a bowl blank basically. I have ingrain coming towards me and it's a little bit out around so I'm just going to come in and make a nice cleaning cut like so. Now this is going to call Alvis so it's a little dusty, a little chippy. So it's kind of a dirty wood to work with, but it's beautiful when it's finished, so it's worth the uh, hassle. And I'm only stopping talking because I really don't want to eat this stuff. But you can see what I'm doing right now is I'm making an angle. Because I want this to sweep up off the floor, off the floor, off the table. So I want the bottom narrower than the top. And with a nice sharp tool, you get a good clean cut. Oh, that tickles. It's going down my shirt. Um, anyway, I bring this up here. I'm going to make the angle a little bit more of an angle. So I'm going to bring my tool rest in to show myself the angle I want. Come here, start her back up again. And I'm going to follow the tool rest to make the angle. Kind of just like roughing out a blank. I'm using my, fi <laughs> my fingers as a depth gauge. I promised myself I wasn't going to do that. Now I need this to be two inches tall because I need a little bit of weight and a little thickness to this because the base has to hold up some weight when it's standing because there's a lot of material above it, necklaces and the stems and the top. So that's pretty good. So now I want to work on the bottom. Now I'm doing a pull cut here and I'm just cleaning up the bottom a bit and I'm making sure that this edge is further out than the inside because I want this to sit on the outer edges. You just have to have a little bit of a curve or a little bit of a difference there. As I pull here, this looks pretty good. Now one thing you want to be careful of, I got a little enthusiastic on my angle and I almost made the bottom too narrow because what I'm going to do is put some jaws in here and expand it into a recess. Well, it's three inches and I kind of cut it close, but I think we're going to be okay. Now I'm going to take my calipers here and put the edge there so I can get it to match up. There we go. This line matches up over here with this one, so that's the width I need. So we're going to go in about a quarter of an inch, like so. I'm just doing a little pull cut. 
because I'm going to come back with a different tool here and clean this up in a second. Now you can come over here and just like a bowl, just work your way in like this too. I'm coming right up to that edge and I don't want to go any more than that. But I want to make this about a quarter of an inch deep. And depth is an important thing throughout this entire project because we're going to have to do some measurements to make sure that when we drill holes, we don't go through the bottom or the top of anything. Trust me, I did that a couple times in the prototype and it looked kind of interesting. So now I'm taking an easy wood tool and it's a square tip scraper. And I like it a lot for doing something like this. Now you want to raise the tourist up just a smidge. So this is on center, like so. Because I can push this in straight and get myself a very nice flat bottom. And I step myself over. I could do this with an edge tool or an edge scraper, but this really doesn't ever go dull, so it's a nice, it's easier to use for me. So I'm gonna come up, I'm looking for my line there, and I'm getting really close to it. I gotta get rid of the mark I made, there I go. Now, that's not gonna be held in the chuck very well because it's a straight wall. So the next thing I wanna do is get my skew Raise this up to almost center again, and I'm going to take my skew and see the angle right here. I'm going to actually put, the, put this like so. So I'm going to put that angle on the inside of that tenon, or the recess, and that'll give me my dovetail for the jaws to go inside of. So you have this on center, and I'm just going to put it in an angle like so. Push in. Got to meet it up with the bottom right there. That looks good. Now I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and then we're going to reverse it on the lathe and start working on the top part of the bottom. Now we've got all sanded up and there's our dovetail on the bottom for the recess. So we'd simply take this and we put it over the jaws on the chuck. Oops, let me undo that. And then we open the jaws and they expand inside of that recess. Or we close it and then we open it. I think I know it's written on the damn darn. <laughs> Tenon. Uh, anyway, there. Children don't say what I say. Uh, anyway, um, so we have mount, the blank mounted on here. Now we want to dish this out for the jewelry, for the rings and things. So we're going to go about three quarters of an inch to an inch in depth. So we're going to start off with our bowl gouge again, because it moves the wood the quickliest. The quickliest or the hurriedest or the fastest? This is one of those. But anyway, it's just like doing a bowl except I have a camera in my way. There we go. So I'm going to work my way in. And you can see the hole right there that I'm moving out of the way. That's from the worm screw that we had. I just go like so. Now I could have flattened this entire surface first, but there's no reason to because I'm getting rid of most of it. So once I get to the edge, then I'll clean up the lip and make it look right. I want to have a little bit of weight to it, so we're going to leave it about 3 eighths of an inch wide there. And so, there's the hole, and I drilled the hole 3 quarters of an inch deep. So now I know how deep I am into the piece, because once that hole is gone, I'm at a pretty good depth. Now I want the bottom to be kind of flattened out, because when we put that stem on there, it, it needs a flatter area to sit. You don't want a real dished area because you won't be able to attach the tenon on the inside very well. There won't be a lot of grip. So let's go ahead and blend this in. Now I'm turning quickly. There we go. Come across like so. There we go. Now, what I want to do is pull out here and I want to angle this lip in to give it a little bit of flare. If I pushed in, it would be an unsupported cut. So by pulling out, I'm pulling out the grain supporting the cut and it makes the cleanest cut. There we go. Now by doing so, it makes the lip look wider, right? So we're going to go ahead and make that a little thinner and make a curve. But you'll notice, we've got little tiny lines right here. Well, that's because this edge of the tool can't quite make the curve. It's that heel right there hitting the wood as it goes around the corner that lifts the tip off and also etches the wood by pushing in right there. So we want to get rid of that. The easiest way to do it is with a bowl scraper that has a relief grind on it. This thing is like butter and it does a great job of removing all those little ridges. So come here, I'm going to probably move that back just a little bit more so I don't poke myself. And just come in here and push in. Little whispers of wood come off and you can see those lines disappearing. 
So all I'm doing is just working in that curve right there and just blending it in. So I'm going to do a little bit of sanding, and once the sanding is done, we're going to drill a hole in there that's going to receive the big shaft for the uh, jewelry holder. Not the 18-inch one, but we're going for the 15-inch one now. Now I'm doing a little cipher in here um, because I know I'm a quarter inch deep on the tenon or the recess right here, right? And I know that I came in, well, it's a dirty ruler, and I know it came in three quarters of an inch right to here with the depth on the inside, so that leaves me about a half of an inch to drill a hole to receive the tenon for the stem of the jewelry holder. So just make sure you take your time and get the measurement right. If you have to, take this off, measure your recess, double check all your figures to make sure you're really good because you gotta be super, super accurate. And how am I super, super accurate? With this cheap piece of tape. So anyway, <laughs> I put the piece of tape on here, just a little shy of a half inch. And make sure if you have a brad point like this one, see that little tip right there? Make sure it doesn't extend way out because you've got to include that in the measurement so you don't want a little, you know, peephole coming through the bottom because then you're going to have to worry about how to fix that. So this is a Jacob's chuck, by the way. I think you've all seen it a few times. And so it's basically a drill bit holder that's held inside the tailstock on a Morse taper. So I'll turn this on. I've got my speed down at the speed I was sanding with, and that's the way you do this. So I'm just going to turn the handle and advance this in. And there it goes into the wood. So you just turn this slowly, and if the wood doesn't build up too much over here, I can keep track of how deep I'm going. Oh, come on, get off there. Of course that would happen. I'm looking at it from the side. There we go. Okay, there we go. That looks to be the perfect hole, and I don't see any light coming from the other side, so it must have done it right. <laughs> Just double checking my cipher in here. <laughs> what I did was I took the second blank, which is the top, which is just a duplicate of this, except the angle's reversed. I mounted it with double stick tape. I made the angle here. And one cool thing about the angle, the way to check to make sure you've got complementary angles is take your other piece, and when you lay it up here like so, and you get a straight line across, and they meet up, you know that the angles match. So over here, I went ahead and dished out the inside about a half inch. It's just going to hold rings and stuff. And then what I did to make this parting mark right here, I had to take the depth of my roto hinge, because this is what's going to mount on the inside. So basically come here and see it comes out that far. Then I have to add another eighth of an inch that I'm going to drill because I want the stem that holds this up to go inside a little bit so you don't see this mechanism. So then I measured this depth and it came to about here. So I'm going to have about an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter of an inch to spare in depth when I start doing drilling here in a little bit. But I haven't sanded this yet because the next step is I need to make an index of six holes on here. And let me come across real quick because what I want to do is I need to put my golf tees <laughs> evenly spaced so you can see. They look pretty doggone good, don't they? That's hard to do. You can't really do it by eye and trying to get a tape measure out and measure it is really nigh on impossible. So how do you do that? Well, you use an indexing system. And what's really cool is over here, Robust has a laser etched hand wheel which has index numbers on them. And this little screw here, you can see this point coming out. That's how you lock in an index. Well, it goes from one to 48. And actually 48 is also the zero. So this is what you gotta wrap your head around with. So I wanna make six holes equally spaced, right? Well, I'm gonna take this up to eight because six times eight is 48, right? I'm gonna lock that in to where it doesn't wiggle. Come over to here and I have, here we go, a pencil right here. So I've got my tool rest. I'm gonna raise it up to just about on center. And so I'm just gonna come in here and get it flat and do that. So I've made a mark right here. Now, I'm going to unscrew this. You can see me moving it again right here. I'm going to go 8 and 8 is 16. If my math is holding up, and I'm no, known for not being the most mathematical guy in the whole world. So I've rotated this again, come in flat, going to make another mark. Now let's zip this up to the 20, 16 and 8 is 24, right? 16 and 8 is 24. 16, 16, 22, 20, yeah, 24. So, <laughs> do it again. Now the whole idea is I want to make, the next one's going to be 32. Yeah, yeah, this is coming out right. The math is working, so there's 32. 
I'm going to move this now to 40. And one thing I like about this system is it screws in rather than a pin type, so there's no wiggle, there's no slop with it. So our last one now is going to be 48, which is our zero. And so we've got that there. So now we have marks that are equal all the way across. Well, the next thing I want to do is I want to try to make, let's get that out of the way, make sure that I make all my drill holes in the center. Well, the easiest thing to do is put my pencil right here in the center, turn this on, and now we've made an intersection mark, right? And it doesn't matter if you're perfect, but as long as you're equal, that's the important thing. So how do I drill this? Well, they sell some really fancy systems that lock onto here, that hold a drill, keep it in place and everything else like that. And I'm cheap, I don't have one yet. Maybe I will someday. But I'm gonna take my standard drill, get it plugged in here. Yeah, I got power. That's kind of cool having it down there. So the next thing I wanna do is I've got a nice piece of tape on here. This is about three eighths of an inch, maybe a half of an inch. So I wanna put the point, the brad, right on there. I'm going to use the tool, uh, the indexer and lock it in so it doesn't wiggle. So do that like so. And so that's locked in. I'm going to bring the tool rest down just a little bit from below center. So I, because I, what I don't want is the drill bit to hit it. But I want to be able to have an index there so I can make some, you know, check that I'm in the right place. I want an angle. I want these to come up, right? So I've got an angle. I'm going to drill in straight. Now, before I move this, I want to do something. Ah, 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 ah. There we go. I'm going to take a Sharpie and mark this angle right here on the tool rest. So when I bring this out and I come to my next hole, let me move this real quick. Okay, we're at our next hole. Let me lock it in. And I'm actually matching up the numbers I did before so I know I'm hitting in the same spot. So I'm on eight there. So I'm going to put this in here. Now if I drill like this, I'm crooked, right? I bring this up and I'm looking straight down there. It's matching up with that mark now. So now I've got the exact same angle duplicated. So all I have to do is do that six more times, four, five, four more times, and then we're ready to move on to the next, well, we're ready to move on to a little sanding, then we'll move on to the next step. Math, gotta love it. So we have our top part finished. We have the holes drilled. It's all sanded, looks nice. I've done all my depth measurements. So we have to drill two holes in the bottom, but hey, where's the center of the blank? I don't have a center anymore. Easiest way I found to figure this out is you set your calipers to where they're just half the diameter. And the way you test this is, okay, I'm right there. Turn this all the way around. Okay, I can come back a little bit more to where I get an equal reveal here. And I do the same for this edge and that edge. I gotta come back just a little bit more Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna push down there. Got a little tiny point. I'll bring my awl in here and make a bigger point. Whack, whack, whack. So there, now we've got our mark. So we have our center perfectly centered. So the first thing we wanna do is, I need to raise this up a little bit. We're gonna drill a 7 8 of an inch hole about 1 8 of an inch deep. And this is going to allow the shaft of the riser to ups, go up inside of this just a little bit so you don't see the join. So in other words, it disappears inside so you don't see how the mechanism works. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna clamp her down, if I can. <laughs> Get up there. It's arguing with me right now. Okay, oh, well, that would've helped if I'd released it. Okay, so we're gonna get that. Release a little more. I don't want to smash the wood, so we've got to do this carefully. I don't want this thing to spin. That's why I'm taking so much trouble to do this. So it looks like i got to loosen that because I need to bring this down and loosen this again. It helps if you do this in order. So that little hole I made, I'm putting in the very center of the Forstner bit in there. So now it's in place. Now I'm going to clamp it in place. Oh, it's just, there you go. Okay, I'm gonna tighten that a little bit more. I wanna make sure it holds, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna lock down my table. Everything's where I want it. Turn this on. And again, we're just going an eighth of an inch. We just need enough to hide that wood underneath in there. 
so that's good. Now I'm going to change out bits and adjust the table and we'll drill the hole that's going to hold the rotating hinge. So now I've got my bit in for the 3 8 inch hole and I'm just centering it up on the point that was left in there from the other drill bit. And you can see I put a piece of tape on there to measure my depth. So I don't want to go too deep, right? So there we are. That is perfect. Now I've mounted my 15 inch long blank here between centers. I haven't roughed that out all the way because I'm working from this end down, so I'm going to leave that the way it is right now. But I just wanted to get this down a bit because the next thing I have to do is I need to make that 7 8 inch tenon on this end. So I'm going to use my calipers and a parting tool and we're going to make that tenon right here because I want the whole shaft to be 7 8 of an inch and just flow out of that hole. So come down here. Okay, it slipped over and then I'm going to clean up that end right there because what I want to do before I go any further is test fit this. And so I just leave the end engaged back there and I'm going to bring this. I'm going to blind you for a second, try to slip it over. It won't go over, it's too tight. See, it's too tight a fit so I need to loosen that just a little bit because I want it to rotate freely. So I just reestablish the live center where it was, find that little hole. Wiggle around for it. Ah, come on. <laughs> I think it, uh, there it is. Okay, good. Turn it on. I'm just going to take a sliver of wood off. Just a little bit. You don't want it to be too loose in there because it'll induce a wobble. So, we can just go ahead and take this off the entire way this time and see how it fits. And there, that's the fit I want. I want it just like that. Now you can see it's a little bit long. So what I'll do is in the end, I'll sand that down a little bit so it doesn't bump out like that and it'll fit flush. So anyway, the next thing we're going to do, we're going to keep working our way back about one third of the way and we're going to make a decorative element at that point, the like one you can see right here. Now you see we've worked our way back from here. We've made a nice tapered shaft all the way and I've left a little lump here. Well, that lump is going to be again this little element that we want to put in there. You can make any shape you want but it's just nice to break up this long flowing line with something in the upper third of it just to make it more aesthetically pleasing. My wife actually liked that so at least I got farther on that one than I did on the other stuff. <laughs> so anyway I already curved it down on this side and this side so next thing to do is to start establishing this ball, the little oval that I have in there and I want to make this a curve so I'm kind of rounding this over I don't want to make it a straight line in. I think this is a little more aesthetic just by doing the curve. So I'm kind of sneaking up on a bead in the center here. And the hardest part about all this stuff is trying to be symmetrical. So you're going to have to work it in and out a bit. And that's looking pretty good. And I'm using a lot of my hands, not a whole lot of body at this point. But sometimes I move my body when I want to get to one spot or another. It just helps me keep it steady. But there we go. That's looking pretty good. And you want to make this as clean a tool finish as possible because when you sand, it's really tough to get in there and get all the details sanded out without killing the details, if that makes sense. You know what I mean. So anyway, we're going to keep working on this just a little bit and then we're going to move our way back and create a tenon on the bottom of this spindle here. Now the cool thing about this project is I've been using a roughing gouge to do most of the shaping because it's long, smooth movements. And I'm just taking whispers of wood off right now and I made a really beautiful shape there and it's nice and smooth, be easy to sand. But let me grab my parting tool and my calipers because it's tenon time again and we have to make a half inch tenon on this end to fit into the base of the jewelry, of the jewelry holder part of the necklace holder. So I've got my caliper set for a half inch. Interesting thing is it's really close to the diameter of my stub center here too so I just don't want to touch the metal. There that looks good. Now I'm gonna come out just a little bit more here make another like a sixteenth of an inch cut. Come down here and leave that proud. So turn this off, undo this, and then we gotta find the base. There's the base. So we'll see how we're doing. See if that fits and it feels like it's 
just a little bit wide just yet. So I'm going to thin that down a little bit. But what this does is this is the part where it gives you a chance to see how this mates up inside. And you can see it looks pretty even around the edges. I don't have any lumps. So when I get the tenon to fit, that's going to smack dab right on there and make a nice seal and look pretty cool. I'm just freshening up a tenon on the end of the stems that we're going to be making. Uh, by the way, I went ahead and sanded this to 240 grit. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I like it. Came out well. Now everything I'm sanding is to 240 grit. You can go finer if you want to, but I really haven't found a need for it. Goncola Alves really holds up well. Well, here's my redesigned non-golf tee stem. <laughs> so I think this looks a little more uh, shaker type. Uh, you know, it's got the lines that they have and things like that. So it's kind of neat, a little craftsman. This is Wenge. I had a bunch of it laying around the shop and I had some little sticks of it. So I'm just using those up and I'm starting with about a two and a half inch stick. And then I've got this on here. I've already tested my tenon to make sure it fits really nicely right there with that. So what I'm going to do is turn this on and grab a pencil because what I'm doing right here is you can see there is just a little bit of a shoulder here. Well that shoulder helps me make these stick out the exact same amount when I put it in the hole so it just doesn't slide into the depth. It stops it from going in right there. So I'm going to come up here and mark right there. That is the edge and that is the end. And so I want to take a parting tool now and again almost like making a tenon. I want to come in here, and this is going to be the very end of it right here. I'm going to bring this up. This is a half inch. Okay, that cleared. And this is just real simple, if I can find it. <laughs> Grab my spindle gouge, and I'm just going to move the wood away. Like so, get the cut established. My tool rest is just a little bit high. We'll just lower that just a little bit. And don't do that while it's moving or you'll hit the chuck. <clears throat> We're all adults here. So anyway, bring it in again. Now I'm getting a better angle on it and a better cut. And you can even angle your tool rest to match the angle you're trying to make the stem and that helps you out a little bit more. So there we go. We're getting about where we want to be. I want to bring this down pretty close there, rub the bevel a little bit, I get a nicer cut. So now, we're going to clear out a lot of this wood right here and establish the top part, like so. And right there's our edge, and we're just going to make that shape. You're going to wind up with just a little nub on there, but you can sand that off by hand and it'll look just fine. So very lightly establish this one more time, finish my angle. I'm going to sand this, repeat five more times, and then we're ready for assembly. We do have one final thing to do, and we have to drill a hole in here to receive the blind pivot hinge. So we have our Forstner bit in, Forstner bit, our Jacobs chuck with a 3 8 inch drill bit in here. Now the thing is, is, okay, if you look back along this way, I've got my arm resting, whoops, on the uh, livestock or the tailstock so it helps me get this straight so when you do a motion like this you want to make sure that you're secured so when you push in it's a straight push so now I'm just going to push in and drill in until I get to that depth marker come back get some of the shavings out do it again there you go so we've got that drilled so the next step is the assembly and you can pick the glue of your choice you can use super glue you can use like tight bond uh, 3 wood glue, uh, but this will go in like so. But the first thing I need to assemble actually is the blind pivot hinge part because this is an interesting system. And so you know, it's a roto hinge from Lee Valley Tools and it's called blind pivot hinges and I'm using the 3 8 inch one. So you guys can stop and start and read this over several times and write that down and know what you're getting. So anyway, what they look like is again this. There's a washer there and this all pivots. This is what we used on the salt cellar last season. So anyway, I'm going to take this hole and put it right over that, tap it into place, and it makes a nice firm connection, but at the same time we spin. And you can see how now this hides up inside so you really don't see a seam. The wood doesn't meet up into it. It goes up inside. That's why we did that relief cut. So next step, glue of your choice put that in like so and then we take our non golf tee looking stems put them in one two three 
four, five, ha, I did it right, six. And you can see how that indexing jig made these all beautifully spaced, evenly spaced, and the angles all match too because of the way I set up the drill. But anyway, that is how you make a necklace and jewelry holder. I hope you enjoyed it. So until the next time on Wood Turning, keep turning. The American Beauty Tim uses was made by Robust Tools. All our lays have a seven year warranty. Our tool wrists feature a hardened rod on top. Lots of sizes to fit your lathe. Robust. Because the making matters. Thompson Lay Tools. Welcome to a new level of professional wood turning tools. Made by a wood turner for wood turners.